Greetings. Today we're going to have a small story of technological disruption, but a very good example of one, and how the atom, the accelerating tectonomic medium of the world, is continuously hacking away at something that is too artificially expensive or being protected by anti-innovation barriers, and how the pressure to disrupt that situation and dislodge that incumbent rises exponentially, and then when there is the disruption, the replacement is very, very fast. And how this example is going to be a metaphor for much larger but related examples. So you can see here on the screen there's an article titled Big Calculator, How Texas Instruments Monopolized Math Class. Now in the United States, for those of you who may not be familiar, whenever there is a large incumbent industry that focuses more on government lobbying and protection from the government rather than innovation and wants to gouge a captive audience of customers, the prefix of big usually goes before that industry, such as big oil or big tobacco or now big tech. And the calculator industry was never going to be that big, but the same metaphor applies because you have an example of something shielded from market forces by lobbying done by a large corporation that was selling an overpriced instrument, and therefore you have big calculator. Now in the United States, many of you have experienced, or if you're old enough, you have bought this for your children, how math classes required a $100 graphing calculator for all students to purchase. That's pretty expensive, especially considering that an ordinary scientific calculator that exists in all Microsoft Windows computers is free and quite flexible, and there's no hardware component. It is 100% dematerialized and 100% free. But somehow this graphing calculator was required for a lot of math classes, and over about 20 years, Texas Instruments sold 75 million units of this calculator at $100 each. So that is $7.5 billion of revenue. That is not a huge portion of Texas Instruments revenue, over that entire 20-year period. But considering who was being burdened with this cost, these are students and their parents usually have to buy it for them and some of them are from working class families, a $100 calculator that you're only going to use for one super specialized instance is somewhat predatory. It's very analogous to the textbook scam. In colleges, many professors write a textbook and require their students to buy it at a huge, huge, huge markup. And I'll have another video about that as well. It is extremely unethical, but it's small enough that it doesn't attract a lot of attention, both from the authorities who might do something to stop this type of predatory pricing behavior, or from innovators who want to focus on larger markets, not smaller ones. But after enough time passed, it was inevitable that an unnecessary piece of highly specialized hardware that is relatively expensive and responsible for a few billion dollars per year of expenditure that should be completely dematerialized and made free, it was inevitable at some point that some innovator would do something about that. Which leads us to the second article that I'm going to post here, titled, The Reign of the $100 Graphing Calculator Required by Every U.S. Math Class is Finally Ending. There's a startup called Desmos that has created an online calculator equivalent, and you can use it on any PC. It is a free application, and it's dematerialized. No one can steal your graphing calculator. This is another problem that students would face. A $100 calculator could be stolen because it is so expensive. And remember, it's not just saving $100 each from students who are going to have to buy it anyway. It is increasing access. What if someone is a very smart 11-year-old, and they're not at a point where they're taking classes that require this calculator, but they have a talent for this type of mathematics? Because the Desmos calculator is free, Free, that student can start playing around with it soon and he can expand his expertise in mathematics because the barrier to entry of the tools needed to partake in that level of experimentation was reduced to zero. There are also other countries where $100 is a lot of money. I mean, in some of the poorer countries of the world, you have untapped mathematical talent among rural children and disenfranchised children throughout those countries. They're never going to have a $100 calculator. They may not even have access to a PC, but if their school has a PC, then the graphing calculator application can be on that PC for free. So you're increasing access through the deflation inherent to driving the cost of this tool down to zero and the dematerialization of not needing any hardware anymore. And therefore, you don't need the retail stocking and everything associated with this hardware. So startup Desmos deserves to be praised, but it is just like any other startup trying to solve a specific problem. And all such technological disruptions and sweeping aside of all incumbent anti-innovation behaviors always experiences exponential pressure. And that's why this status quo from Texas Instruments could last for 20 years because it wasn't a very big market until it got to the point that a team as small as Desmos's team was able to create an app and they obviously made money by doing so because it became easy enough to focus on this specific 
specific application and many thanks to them for getting rid of something that is not a huge problem in society which was still very anti-progress behavior from the lobbying efforts of a large corporation that also had a lock on requirements that schools buy its calculator. Now why is this story important other than just being a small feel-good story of technological innovation? The much much greater expense than a mere hundred dollar calculator like this is the paradigm of these established educational institutions themselves. In the United States spending in public schools per child is twenty thousand dollars per year per child yet the education outcomes are not good at all. Universities are extremely expensive and on the brink of substantial disruption as I speak about in other videos on this channel. When a startup like Desmos can get rid of one type of expense that has been tacked on to the educational experience you are strengthening all the small technological forces that in combination are very large that are disrupting both lower education and higher education. The notion that you have to pay a lot of money for the privilege of being educated by an institution that survives on a scarcity based model and frankly a pyramid scheme type of model in some ways is just fundamentally wrong and will be seen as one of the problematic aspects of our era. And that's why this Desmo story is one more blow against that gigantic edifice and how technology will sweep aside the restrictions and the costs that are artificially imposed by the educational institution model and make many more types of education far more accessible to a greater number of people, which of course improves the economy because a greater portion of the people have a higher standard of education each. Something to think about. So these articles will be in the description box below. And if you like this type of content, I encourage you to subscribe to this channel. Thank you very much for watching.